again. Okay, so we've been working through explicit patterning. We've done identification of explicit patterns through looking at a table of values. We have looked at graphs to determine explicit pattern rules, and we've also used visuals. Now, today what we're going to do is we are going to create visuals and we are going to do the plotting of patterns. So instead of you just identifying, I'm gonna give you the algebraic expression today and you are going to have to either create a visual from it or plot it on a graph depending on what question you're on and what I've asked you to do. So I've taken the most popular algebraic expression that you have seen a bajillion times so far this year 2x plus 1. So imagine I asked you to create a visual that shows four term numbers for this pattern. Now the first thing that you need to do is do a table of values for yourself. So of course you've got x and you've got y and you've got 1, 2, 3, 4. Please make sure that all of your patterns have four term numbers. Now let's figure out the term value. One times two plus one is three. Two times two plus one is five. Three times two plus one is seven. And we know the next one is nine. In fact, once you've got the first two and you know what your common difference is, you can just boogie on through this. So Y tells me how many of a shape needs to be within the picture. So the first thing I'll do is I'll write down my term numbers. So I've got term number one or figure number one, term two, term three, and term four, okay? Now in term number one, I have to have three shapes. So it could be as easy as doing something like this. One, two, three. There is figure number one, okay? And then in term number two, Obviously, it's going to be one, two, three, four, five. Term number three, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And in term number four, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Okay, so that would be an appropriate visual. You don't have to use X's, you could use circles, you could use squares triangles, you could use any formation, it doesn't have to be in a line, okay? As you learned last week when we talked about it, basically you can have the same term number, but you can have different, or sorry, the same algebraic expression, but you can have many different ways to actually show it in a visual. Now, one of the things that uh, I want to challenge you with is saying, okay, well, if I'm creating visuals for it, how can I differentiate between the constant and the variable visually. Now, I'm gonna know that you watched the video because if you do this in the work I give you today, it's going to be bonus marks, okay? So here's what you do. You pick two different shapes, one that's going to be your constant and one that's going to be your variable. So let's try this again. Let's say that term number one, term number two, term number three, term number four. Let's say that blue circles are going to be my variable and red squares are going to be my constant. Now you know, going back to our original algebraic expression, this is my variable and this is my constant. Your constant is going to stay the same in every single term number. This means that if I said blue circles for the variable and red squares for the constant, that plus one, I just have to draw one red square in every single visual. So let's start off with the red squares. And now let's add my variable. Well, two times one is two. Two times two is four. 
2 times 3 is 6, and so on. So these visuals here represent variable and constant. 2x plus 1. 2x plus 1 in term 2. 2x plus 1 in term 3. So the only thing that's changing here are the number of blue circles because they are the variable and they are the things that change. So if you do it this way, in the visuals that I have asked you, you will gain bonus points for the fact that you are determining the constant from the variable depending on the symbols that you use. Now, if you just do the X method that I showed you at first, that's fine too. You won't lose any marks, but you won't earn those bonus ones too. All right, so let's do one more example. Okay, let's look to our second example of creating a visual. Now in this one, I've used 3x minus 2, and I'm using this one for a very specific reason, because visualizing a constant that is added is easy, but there is no way to visualize a constant that is being completely taken away. So you can't necessarily show the constant as being different. That means that you'll only be able to draw the visuals with a difference between variable and constant using the, the method for the bonus points. Now the first one that I've shown you here, 3x times 2 minus 2, we do our table of values, x, y, 1, 2, 3, 4. 3 times 1 is 3, minus 2 is 1. 2 times 3 is 6, minus 2 is 3. No, I made a mistake somewhere. 3 times 2 is, 3 times 1 is 3, minus 2 is 1. 2 times 3 is 6, minus 2 is 4. 3 times 3 is 9, minus 2 is 7. And 4 times 2, oh, there we go, is 10. All right, so I've got my values here, okay? And then I've got term one, term two, term three, and term four, okay? Now in the first one, we're gonna say that it is a pink triangle, okay? The next one, it is four, so now it's got one, two, three, four. It kind of looks like the radioactive symbol. The next one has got seven, so it's gonna be one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and then the next one has 10. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10. Okay, so there is my visual for three X minus two. So you've seen both examples. So again, you can choose just to draw as many shapes as are indicated by Y in term one, two, three, and four in any arrangement, okay? But if you have an addition of a constant, you can break it up between variable, and constant. All right, so now what happens when we graph these? I'll show you. Okay, so as you can see, I've created a graph and I've brought over our two algebraic explicit patterns and I've brought over our table of values so I can show you how to plot them. Now, the reason why we started off with term number and term value is because term number and term value relate to the X and Y coordinates, which means that X are all the x coordinates and y is all the y coordinates. So the term number is x and the term value is y. Now you know on a graph you always, always, always read x first. And so the way that I plot these is simply looking at the coordinate pair 1, 3 and then I plot it 1, 3. And then I look at 2, 5, 3, 7, and then my last one would be directly off the grid. And then what I do after I have plotted those points is I join them together 
using my straight line, creating my slope. But now some of you might say to me, okay, well, Mrs. Thompson, what happens if the grid goes farther than your point four? Well, who says that you can't do a point for zero, okay? Two times zero is zero plus one is one. That means that on the X axis at zero, you should have a point at one. This also means that if you go 2x times negative 1, you're going to get negative 2 plus 1 is going to be negative 1. So I can extend this pattern and this slope actually into my negatives. Now, obviously, one of the questions that you're going to be is, Mrs. Thompson, if I've already made this graph, do I have to plot, make new graphs for every single one that you ask me to do? No! All you have to do is use a different color for your slope and to indicate it on your table of values. So 2x plus 1 is going to be blue. 3x minus 2 is going to be red. So you're going to have to indicate it to me. So the next one is 1, 1. The next one is two, four. The one after that is three, seven. They share a point. And then four, 10, again, way, way, way up at the top. Again, I can go back though and do zero. So three times zero is zero minus two is negative two. So it would be there. Or I could do negative one, three times negative one is negative three minus another two is negative five. So it would be here. And then once you start drawing all of your lines and comparing all of your slopes, what you can do is you can kind of start to compare them. Which one has a higher angle? Which one has a lower angle? Which one is more steep? Which one is more flat? And you can begin to compare them. But today, all I want you to do is learn how to visualize your algebraic explicit patterns and to graph them. So that's your job for today. Good luck. And if you have any problems, remember, I'm always here waiting to hear from you. Bored. Help me.